Hello, my cool cats of the space of Earth. Due to my duties looking after my poorly old husband, I haven't had the opportunity to make a proper intro this week, so do forgive. However, I have managed to create an illustration, and this week I felt the urge to go into fairyland. As usual, I inked onto watercolour paper over my light box, although this isn't the actual one, just a reconstruction of a previous fairy tale picture. And then onto the wonderful world of colour. And I decided, after completing the illustration, to write a short story based on the image. And this is something that you can do too. Take a picture and use it as inspiration to write a narrative for it. It only took me about an hour, and it was an hour well spent away from my other worries. So here's the story. It doesn't have a title yet. I wonder if you can suggest one. At last, the winter had passed, and in the silver woodland, it was time for homes to be cleaned. In a giant oak tree lived a tiny fairy. Her name was Betsy, and she had spent the last months living on her own since her best friend had passed. She had felt the spell of loneliness creeping over her in the long, cold months of winter. But now the sun was rising on a new day and the beams of warmth were already on the back of her tree. The blanket belonging to Herbie was still hanging over the chair in her sitting room. She picked it up and snuggled it against her face, the smell of the dormouse still nestling in the woollen fibres. Still, she thought, there is a time for everyone and she folded the blanket and put it on the shelf with her other bedding. It really felt like a great time for a spring clean. First, she pulled out the furniture from the walls and swept the dust bunnies from underneath. She found a button that had popped off her coat in December. It rolled under the dresser. And then she took the covers from the sofa and put them in the washing machine. The cobwebs hung high up on the ceiling, no sign of the little spiders that had made them. It was warm enough now for them to move outside and go and find a new space to live in. Betsy fetched her long-handled duster and carefully swept away the spider bunting. This was actually beginning to feel quite good, she decided. It was giving her some energy back, something that she hadn't felt for a long time. She thought back to the coldest winter days, thick snow carpeting the woodland, deadening the tiniest of sounds from the animals and birds who had to be out searching for food. At least she didn't have to do that. Her store cupboard was stocked to the ceiling. Herbie had made sure of that. She sighed, thinking of the food that he had collected and never eaten. there was a pile of books on her table. Her winter reads. Her books had kept her company as the frosts had bitten and the wind had rocked the branches above. She gently smoothed the covers and put them by the front door, ready to return to the library. It would be open again soon for spring. But still, she felt, what, um, apart from everyone. It was hard to describe like a cold stone was in her chest and it was chilling everything else within. Having swept all the dust and twigs and leaves into a corner by the front door, she decided to make a pot of tea and drink it outside in the sunshine. Hello, Betsy, said a familiar voice. It was Rusty, down from his favourite perch on the fourth branch. Won't you join me for some tea? she asked. It was comforting to catch up with an old friend and the heavy feeling Betsy carried stopped being the only thing she could focus on. Rusty told her how harsh the winter had been for everyone, from inside her cosy warm home with her nose inside a book. It was hard for Betsy to realise what it must be like for those who lived outside, in nests or in crevices. It really is the hardest time of year now admitted Rusty. The berries have all been eaten and the caterpillars have yet to hatch. 
there really is very little to eat. But that's no good, cried Betsy. I have a larder full of food. And she showed Rusty the jars of jam and tinned berries, beans, and soups, and dried apricots and apple rings. We must do something, said Betsy. And they sat there with their steaming teacups in hand and wing, planning. The following day the sun rose again with the merest wisps of cloud hanging over the fields in the valley below the woodland. Betsy, Rusty and a few of the others who lived in the Grand Oak had been working since dawn. Outside, around the magic fairy circle, was a long table, festooned, laden with food. There were apple crumbles and jam tarts and sandwiches made from whatever could go between two slices of seeded sourdough. Peanut cookies, jugs of cranberry juice and nettle and broccoli tarts. There were china plates and bowls, paper napkins and cups. It was nearly time. First the squirrels came, tentatively inching down the tree trunk, face first. Then the blackbirds, sparrows and the crows, the latter being told to be on their very best behaviour. Next the badger family and finally a mummy hedgehog and her litter of tiny spiky children. Rusty was already tucking into the blackberry muffins. They were his favourite. Betsy stood with her back against the wood, warming in the mid-morning sun, and folded her hands around her mug. Looking at the friends from the woodland, hungrily eating the food that Herbie had harvested, a new pleasant feeling crept into her chest. It had been a hard winter. It had been a lonely winter. But that cold stone of heartbreak was finally melting. Hey folks, if you are as excited about books and art as I am, then you might be interested in these courses that will teach you what I know. Make a picture book step by step will help you go about writing, illustrating and publishing your own picture book. It's a comprehensive course starting with making your key decisions and takes you all the way to making your print ready copy. Do you need to know how to draw children or dragons or sea creatures? These shorter classes will help you do just that. Pop over to my website and see what's on offer. Go on, give it a go. Next week I'll be telling you about my 50 page rule and other weird habits I have around books and reading. I'm off to enjoy the rest of Sunday and here in the UK, Mother's Day! I will see you next week! Nanu nanu.